Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to build the most powerful mini PC we can using the Menace Forum HM90. Now by itself, the HM90 is actually a really nice little mini PC. It's powered by a Ryzen 9 4900H, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and built-in Radeon 8 graphics. It definitely does a great job like it sits, being that we only have integrated graphics, but I definitely want a little more out of this. If you're interested in checking out a review on the PC like it sits, I'll leave a link in the description. But in this video, we're going to be adding an external M.2 GPU. And to do this, I'm going to be using the ADT Link PCIe X16 to M.2 adapter. This is specifically designed to run a GPU over M.2, but it doesn't come with power. And an M.2 slot just doesn't put out enough power to run a desktop GPU. So for this, we're going to be using a 300 watt Dell power supply. This is for an older all-in-one. Uh, it's got an 8-pin connector on it. This is actually rated at 280 watts, but I've done some testing and I can pull up to 320 out of it without it shutting off. So I'm going to be pushing it a little bit. Bit, but I think I'll be good to go. And originally I was going to use an RTX 3060 for this mini PC, but you know, I figured let's go all out with it and use an RTX 3080 Ti on this unit. The 3080 Ti is rated for 350 watts, but if I lower the power to around 90, maybe even 80%, we'll be fine with the power supply we have, hopefully. But I'm willing to try it out, so let's go ahead and get this set up. So when it comes to the HM90, unfortunately it only has one M.2 slot but we do have the option to add two 2.5 inch SSDs. So what I'm gonna do is add an SSD here. That's what my operating system is gonna be running from. And we're gonna run the GPU over this M.2. So we'll go ahead and remove this SSD. And as soon as I get that out of the way, we can install the adapter. So this is gonna plug right into that M.2 slot. And I'll go ahead and mount it back in here with that screw. And once it's finished, it looks something like this. As you can see, we have this big PCIe X16 adapter hanging off the side of this mini PC, but we do have this flex cable here, and uh, I think I can make this look pretty decent. So what I need to do now is plug in my SSD. The HM90 does come with two adapters, so you can add two 2.5 inch SSDs. I didn't have to buy anything extra for this. So my operating system is going to be running from that 2.5 inch SSD. We're going to be running the GPU over the M.2 slot, but I do want this to look pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and button it back up. And since we have that flex cable, I was able to route it into the bottom half. So I do have the top and the bottom on this mini PC. All that's really left to do is plug this GPU in and power. So as you can see, that 3080 Ti sits nicely in the little dock. It's sitting right beside this mini PC because I have that flex cable run underneath it, but we have access to all of the IO on the back. And with that Dell power supply, it'll actually be able to come over the back of my desk so it's not all in the way. I won't have a ton of wires hanging out. This does look pretty good when it's set up. So with everything in place, the last thing we need to do is plug in our two 8-pin connectors to that 3080 Ti. We've also got the Dell power supply going to the dock and we'll need power to the mini PC. It runs on 19 volts, unfortunately. But yeah, I think we're ready to boot this up for the first time. I do have a fresh install of Windows 11 on the drive, but let's see if this even works. So I'll just have to power on the mini PC. And the dock should do the rest. It'll send signal over M.2. And yeah. So we've got signal, we've got power to the GPU. Now it's time to see if this is really making a connection. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and plug this into my monitor. I'm going to get all the drivers set up. I'll install some games and I'll be right back. All right, so far so good. I've done a fresh install of Windows 11. I've updated all of the drivers. I've installed the AMD drivers for the built-in graphics and the CPU. Also, the NVIDIA drivers for this external 3080 Ti. Usually, Windows will download the driver, but this time with the 3080 Ti, it would not, so I did have to manually install it. But everything's up and running. I've installed some applications that we're going to be testing out. But first up, here's the 4900H got those eight cores, 16 threads, and this is running at 35 watts, 16 gigabytes of DDR4. We've also got the built-in Radeon 8 graphics that come with that 4900H, and the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti running over that M.2 slot. So the first thing I did was run a couple benchmarks. I just went with 3D Mark. We've got Firestrike and Night Raid. Firestrike came in with a 27,722, looking really good here. 
The little PC by itself is around 3400 So yeah, we got a substantial boost here, and it really comes down to that GPU. And with Firestrike, we got a 14491 And this is around close to 1500 by itself without an external GPU. So uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be able to game with this. And really, when it comes down to it, this 3080 Ti is great at 4K gaming. And that's why I'm connected to my 4K monitor here. So uh, let's go ahead and test out a few games. First up, we'll go with Doom Eternal. First on the list, Doom Eternal 4K Ultra Settings. And I probably could have jacked it up to Nightmare and got over 100 FPS on average. But, you know, Ultra still looks really good in 4K. And this is running absolutely amazing. I actually wasn't expecting it to run this well. Next up, GTA 5, 4K, very high settings. We got an average of 81 FPS. And, uh, you know, I've tried this on other PCs. 4K is just really hard to do with this game here. Jacking up that resolution really does take a toll on that GPU. But we're pretty much good to go, even with this 3080 running over an M.2 slot. Dirt 5 is one of those games that really does take a lot of power to run at 4K, but here we are at ultra settings, 4K, and we're getting an average of 76 FPS out of this. Halo Infinite also did really good with this setup. We got an average of 64 FPS, 4K Ultra, and if I was to play this all the time on a setup like this, I would probably just take it down to very high. But uh, overall, it does work out quite well like this. Next on the list, Forza Horizon 5, 4K Extreme Settings, and with this, we got an average of 74 FPS. I could drop it down to Ultra, but, you know, we're still over 60 here, and it's playing just fine with this little setup. And the last one I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, Ray Tracing Ultra, 4K, and uh, unfortunately, we just can't hit 60 with it. Even with Ray Tracing set to medium, I get an average of around 56 FPS. With it set up like this, we're getting an average of around 51. We could drop it down to high settings or even ultra and get over 60, but I really wanted to see what we could do with Ray Tracing on. Since I'm here, I figured we'd go ahead and test out some emulation. Now, this little PC by itself actually does a pretty decent job with Wii U, PS3, we got some PS2, but we really can't go over 720 and 1080. But with the way I have it set up right now and the 3080 Ti, we're at 4K here with Breath of the Wild. I did see it drop down to around 58 and a little area, but I think that's just uh, shaders in the background being cached. And the final thing I wanted to test for this video was some PS3 emulation using RPCS3, 4K, Skate 3, Constant 60. And it will run this without the GPU, but remember, we're only at 720p. But with this all attached, we're at 4K here, and it's looking really, really good. So in the end, it actually turned out way better than I thought it would. As long as we can get signal over that M.2, I was sure we were going to get a jump in GPU performance, but I really wasn't expecting, you know, 4K all the way through, ultra settings and even higher with basically anything. Is it practical? No. Is it overkill? Yes. Is it pretty awesome? In my opinion, I think it is. 
We're definitely not getting as much out of that 3080 Ti over M.2. If we had this in a machine with a real PCIe X16 slot, we'd get an even better jump in GPU performance. But I mean, you saw the games I ran in this video. I think it does perform really well. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this little rig, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.